I've been hearing you talk quite a bit about uh, string theory, landscape, and the swampland. What the heck are those two concepts? <laughs> okay, very good question. So let's go back to what I was describing about Feynman. Yes. Feynman was trying to do these diagrams for graviton and electrons and all that. He found that he's getting infinities he cannot resolve. Okay, the natural conclusion is that field theories and gravity and quantum theory don't go together and you cannot have it. So in other words, field theories and gravity are inconsistent with quantum mechanics, period. String theory came up with examples, but didn't address the question more broadly that, is it true that every field theory can be coupled to gravity in a quantum mechanical way? It turns out that Feynman was essentially right. All, almost all particle physics theories, no matter what you add to it, when you put gravity in it, doesn't work. Only rare exceptions work. Hmm. So string theory are those rare exceptions. So therefore, the general principle that Feynman found was correct. Quantum field theory and gravity and quantum mechanics don't go together, except for Joule's exceptional cases. There are exceptional cases. Okay. The, the total vastness of quantum field theories that are there, we call the set of quantum field theories, possible things. Which ones can be consistently coupled to gravity? We call that subspace the landscape. Mm -hmm. The rest of them we call the swampland. It doesn't mean they are bad quantum field theories, they're perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. But when you couple them to gravity, they don't make sense, unfortunately. And it turns out that the, the ratio of them, the, the number of theories which are consistent with gravity the, to the ones which without, the ratio of the area of the landscape to the swampland, in other words, mm -hmm. is measure zero. And so the swampland is infinitely large? <laughs> the swampland is infinitely large. So let me give you one example. Take a theory in four dimension with matter mm -hmm. with maximal amount of supersymmetry. Can you get, it turns out a theory in four dimension with maximal amount of supersymmetry is characterized just with one thing, a group, what we call the gauge group. Once you pick a group, you have to find the theory. Okay, so does every group make sense? Yeah. As far as quantum field theory, every group makes sense. There are infinitely many groups, there are infinitely many quantum field theories. Mm -hmm. But it turns out there are only finite number of them which are consistent with gravity out of that same list. So you can take any group, but only finite number of them, the ones whose, what we call the rank of the group, the ones whose rank is less than 23. Anyone bigger than rank 23 belongs to the swampland. There are infinitely many of them. They're beautiful field theories, but not when you include gravity. So, so then this becomes a hopeful thing. So in other words, in our universe, we have gravity. Therefore, we are part of that dual subset. <laughs> now, is this dual subset small or large? Yeah. It turns out that subset is humongous but we believe still finite. Hmm. The set of possibilities is infinite, but the set of uh, consistent ones, I mean, the set of quantum features are infinite, but the consistent ones are finite, but humongous. The fact that they're humongous is the problem we are facing in string theory, because we do not know which one of these possibilities the universe we live in. If we knew, we could make more specific predictions about right. our universe. We don't know. And that is one of the challenges with string theory. Which point on the landscape, which corner of this landscape do we live in? We don't know. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? Well, there are, there are principles that are beginning to emerge. So I will give you one example of it. You look at the patterns of what you're getting in terms of these good ones, the, the ones which are in the landscape compared to the ones which are not. You find certain patterns. I'll give you one pattern. You find in the, all the ones that you get from string theory, Gravitational force is always there, but it's always, always the weakest force. Hmm. However, you could easily imagine field theories for which gravity is not the weakest force. For example, take our universe. If you take mass of the electron, if you increase the mass of the electron by a huge factor, the gravitational attraction of the electrons will be bigger than the electric repulsion between two electrons. Mm -hmm. And the gravity will be stronger, that's all. It, it happens that it's not the case in our universe because electron is, is very tiny in mass compared to that. Just like our universe, gravity is the weakest force we find in all these other ones, which are part of the good ones, mm -hmm. the gravity is the weakest force. 
This is called the weak gravity conjecture. We conjecture that all the points in the landscape have this property. Our universe being just an example of it. So there are these qualitative features that we are beginning to see. But how do we argue for this? Just by looking patterns? Just by looking string theory has this? No, that's not enough. We need more, ex more reason, more better reasoning. And it turns out there is. Mm -hmm. The reasoning for this turns out to be studying black holes. Ideas of black holes turn out to put certain restrictions of what a good quantum field theory should be. It turns out using black hole, the fact that the black holes evaporate, the fact that the black holes evaporate gives you a way to, to check the, the relation between the mass and the charge of elementary particle. Because what you can do, you can take a charged particle and throw it into a charged black hole and wait it to evaporate. And the, by the, looking at the properties of evaporation, you find that if it cannot evaporate, particles whose mass is less than their charge, then it will never evaporate. Mm -hmm. You'll be stuck. And so the possibility of a black hole evaporation forces you to have particles whose mass is sufficiently small so that the gravity is weaker. So you connect this fact to the other fact. So we begin to find different facts that reinforce each other. So different parts of the physics reinforce each other. And once they all kind of come together, you believe that you're getting the principle correct. So weak gravity conjecture is one of the principles we believe in as a necessity of these conditions. So these are the predictions string theory are making. Is that enough? Well, it's qualitative. It's, it's a semi-quantitative. It's just the mass of the electron should be less than some number. But that number is, if, you, if I call that number one, the mass of the electron turns out to be 10 to the minus 20, actually. So it's much less than one. It's not one. But on the other hand, there's a similar reasoning for a big black hole in our universe. And if that evaporation should take place, gives you another restriction, tells you the mass of the electron is bigger than 10 to the, is now in this case, bigger than something. Mm -hmm. It shows bigger than 10 to the minus 30 in the mm -hmm. Planck unit. So you find, aha, uh -huh, the mass of the electron should be less than one, but bigger than 10 to the minus 30. In our universe, the mass of the electron is 10 to the minus 20. Okay, now this kind of you could call post-diction, but I would say it follows from principles that we now understand from string theory, mm -hmm. first principle. So we are making, beginning to make these kinds of predictions, which are very much uh, connected to aspects of particle physics that we didn't think are related to gravity. We thought, just take any electron mass you want. What's the problem? Mm -hmm. It has a problem with gravity. And so that conjecture has also a happy consequence that it explains that our universe, like why the heck is gravity so weak as a force? Uh, and that's not only an accident, but almost a necessity if these forces are to coexist effectively. Exactly, so that's, that's, that's the reinforcement of, of, of what we know in our universe, but we are, we are finding that as a general principle. So we want to know what aspects of our universe, universe is forced on us, mm -hmm. like the weak gravity conjecture and other aspects. Do we under, how much of them do we understand? Can we have particles lighter than neutrinos? Or maybe that's not possible. You see the neutrino mass, it turns out to be related to dark energy in a mysterious way. Mm -hmm. Naively, there's no relation between dark energy and the mass of a particle. We have found arguments from within the swampland kind of ideas why it has to be related. And so, so they're beginning to be these connections between consistency of quantum gravity and aspects of our universe gradually being sh sharpened. But we are still far from a precise quantitative prediction like we have to have such and such, but that's the hope that we are going in that direction.